Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my microservices tutorial. So in the first video we talked about the agenda and what all we are going to cover. And in the second video I talked about, uh, so let's say first video is all about uh, slides. Where I talked about what we are going to do. In the second video we created a, a more a simple repo based line. Uh, dependencies and package script and all these things what what you need to create a baseline template okay now we have all the utilities plugins extensions everything now we need to patch the framework in the code because we are talking about microservices in the node.js so we will be sticking to the node.js framework that can be uh, nest.js and express now, but here the important aspect is because we are going to work on the microservices and I'm not the person where I just create a repository for the front and back end for utilities for the infra separately. No, we are going to use either a mono repo or a simple re single repo, right? So there is a next thing you need to understand is single repo or mono repo. Because the important part is we are living in 2023 and 2024 is coming up. We cannot just create a single repository and where, okay, this is for just uh, this microservice. Then there is another uh, repository for another microservice. So let's say if you are building a product, then you might end up having 10 to 20 different uh, repositories for maintaining a separate, separate services. Let's say if you don't have a big team and your team is very much familiar with working uh, in monorepo environment where you can do the code collaborations on different services, then it's easy to work with monorepo. Single repo is like, okay, one microservice will use a, a single uh, monorepo, right? Single repo. Let's say I created a, a user service that will have its own uh, dependencies, utilities and all it will use a baseline code which we have done. Then there is let's say payment service. It will have its own database, its, its own code, its own lambda. So what I wanted to avoid is having these different different repositories totally different. I mean they will obviously will be independent services in their own domain or a folder namespace but I want to have a single repository. So there can, comes an important concept of a single repo or mono repo, right? All these things will go inside a one single code base. It will be added as a one single repo. And there are different advantages of doing such things. We can use uh, these annex based monorepo or uh, Larna based monorepo and all. I mean, there are many providers which will help you to set up your monorepo. For the beginners, you can start with a single repository. And I will also start with a single repository for some videos. And then when, I, when, I, when we are done with creating a first microservice, then we will jump to a monorepo. And then we will use a annex monorepo, annex tooling. And we are going to use a package based monorepo with uh, PNPM workspace. So that we will try to understand and we'll try to put these things in our head so we can use just only one repository with all the services, all the infra, all the utilities, all the front end, server side, client side, all the code can be there in a single repository monorepo. And there are different monorepo solutions, currently single repo. So we already created a baseline, right? Now in this baseline, we need to patch in either a nest.js or express type script because now I'm not going to write express JavaScript code and you should also not be doing it. If you are doing it, stop doing that. So always use uh, nest.js. It's already supports TypeScript. We will be using nest.js TypeScript and express TypeScript. So you can, we can use uh, this for baselining our first repository or first service. So I'm going to do it in the two different ways. First, I will create a baseline for the express app. So we'll use express TypeScript. And I'm going to build an APIs which follows 12 factor principles. That means 
uh, managing the configurations, managing the database connections, total isolations in the environment, decoupling, 12 factor principles you can Google out. These are the principles which each and every microservices should follow. So it's not only about building an APIs in the nest JSON express TypeScript, but also following those the fundamental principles before writing our first microservice and then deploying it to some uh, AWS environment as a Lambda or on AWS ECS as a container running 24-7. Okay. So before that, I have just a small content about, okay, what all we are covering, what are the major areas. This is a module one, which talks about baselining and getting ready for uh, using single repo structure for the microservices. Then we will talk more about the different concepts of architectures and deployments, my microservices provided by Nest JS and Express TypeScript using uh, event driven architecture or serverless architectures and all. I'm going to divide this whole playlist, playlist into three segments and this is going to be really interesting because I'm going to put all my efforts in building it with all the different aspects of any microservice development but uh, the technology stack will be will be stick to node.js only I mean you can build uh, microservices in either Spring Boot, Java, uh, using Python, using Golang or using node.js so here we are dividing it into three different verticals you can say and three different verticals will be okay the first vertical will be the choosing the framework because whenever we actually build an application we always look for how to build the apis how to build the platform right and here we are talking about services okay. services so we always choose a framework and the language so language we are still stick to js stack javascript world only and here we can just think about okay we are using node.js server side javascript and on top of that the framework so the framework we can stick to express and nest.js because i really love that after working on nest.js i don't explore any other framework to build the api platform. so what is the overall agenda First of all, we choose the framework, we choose the design, we choose the how we are going to build it, build it. And then next thing we are going to do is how we are going to deploy, right? So this is all about uh, choosing the framework, choosing the language. And also, let's talk about the coding and the best practices, right? So it's all about coding standards and structures. Because what happens is that whatever you build, either you build Express, which is unopinated framework or Nest.js, yes, you need to have proper structure, you need to have a proper baseline of things, whatever you are going to put in the microservice so that you can have a clean separation of whatever you are building. So you, you just need to introduce all the 12 factor principles in your application. 12 factor app principles, if you might have heard about this. We need to introduce all these into our independent microservice. It should be adopting a loose coupling. You should have a isolation and separations of all the environment variables which you are using. You should have a clear logging process. You should have a proper process of uh, logging, proper process of uh, injecting the environment variables into your process. You should have a graceful shutdown of your application. You should be logging all the critical aspects of your applications and how you should interact with the database. I mean, we need to work on how to build the best out of a microservice, right? So we need to adopt all these 12 factor app principles. There are 12 factors. I will just name it and we'll talk about it. So it all about the coding practices, how to structure a simple express app, Nest.js app or any other framework, and then how to deal with the, uh, if we talk about nest yes there there are like lots of things come into the picture how to deal with asynchronous things in your code how to deal with the the logging how to deal with the database connections how to aggregate the queries and all those aspects will come into your coding practices because currently you can build an express application but when it comes to build the best out of it there is always i mean there is nothing best if i'm building something then there is someone else can build uh, far more best than that Right. It's all about coding practices and how, what best you can build. Because there is always someone 
who can build build the same thing in some different way which looks nicer and which looks more understandable okay the last thing which we are going to adopt in this microservice section is the deployment part because that is always important either you use a uh, server based services which you are deploying on uh, machines or you are using a lambda based approach which you are deploying on lambdas right because that is purely serverless and here we are going to also talk about the architecture patterns i have covered those architecture patterns in my previous videos also but i will just talk more focus on serverless and abs server based and i will not go much into deep of uh, this cqrs event driven and all we can talk about some of the examples of cqrs and something and event driven approach event driven architecture which we cover in the serverless world okay these are the some of the, the most popular architecture patterns we are going to explore and then it comes to the de deployment in the deployment we are going to use some standard toolings because recently if you look in my channel i covered aws cdk so we will see how we can do the deployment of individual service and lambda or so let's say you are you are building an express application how you can deploy that express application on heroku or if instance because you need a server running to run the application or if you are running a simple node js server then how you can deploy that as a lambda in the server level right so it's going to be lots of fun right? because here i'm going to combine everything about microservices and if you talk about nest js then i already covered nest js microservices it's nest js microservices because when it comes to microservices people think like okay in the next is microservice i already covered all the different patterns which you can adopt so next is microservices we have already covered what is an sgs microservices we have seen okay how to create a tiny services tiny microservices which are using tcp which is using grpc which is using these asynchronous communication using rapid mq or kafka or redis based because these all are transport medium right next is microservice provide extensive uh framework i mean extensive libraries next is microservices which will allow you to create a standalone services which allow you to communicate using tcp grpc using emqt protocol and using redis publish sub publish subscriber or you can create asynchronous microservices which will listen to the particular event you remember if we do the same thing in express you need to spend more effort you need to put more effort but same thing when we write in nest js it is very simplified so this is really important and we will talk about in depth and i will include my existing videos also which i have already built in the nest js microservices so it's going to be fun so we will start with express move to the nest js nest js microservices deployment of these services as a lambda deployment these services as a instance running 24/7 on the containers and then with this also we will also talk about containerization so deployment and containerization is kind of a same containerization using docker when it, when you talk about docker docker is all about now these days we just use a docker to spin up the container and deploy application i mean there are some platform which are still using docker like heroku heroku allows you to create a docker container to run your node js application and we will also use kubernetes i i don't have any videos on kubernetes like how to work with it when you are building a simple node js application so we will cover that because these days learning these things should be easy and you you should know each and everything so all the tools and technologies no express nest js nest js microservices 12 factor principles 
ए डब्ल्यू सी डी के मे बी टेराफॉर्म्स हिरोकु लैमडा सर्वनलेस डिप्लॉइंग दीज एक्सप्रेस ऐप एंड नेस एस ऐप एज लैमडा कंटेनराइजेशन डॉकर डॉकर कंटेनर डॉकर कंपोज क्यूबर नेटिस आर्किटेक्चर पैटर्न ओके सर्वनलेस और सर्वर बेस्ड एंड ऑल दीज core and very popular architecture patterns like cqrs event sourcing uh, event driven architecture pattern and how we will see how we can create a loosely coupled services which are totally independent which have their own data source and own api sets and when you are talking about any system because what we are building we are building a service service can expose any kind of interface we have seen that in the nest js nest js microservices allows you to talk to talk using tcp interface grpc interface emqp and redis as a transport similarly you can use a different interface for building a service you can expose a rest interface http transport mode you can use a graphql interface you can use a uh, trpc or grpc right so these are like different interface you can expose through the service so all those things is possible by either using express by using nest js I mean TRPC is just like a simple library that is more compatible with Express, but you can we can explore if we want to do it with the Nest JS also. Okay, so this is pretty much uh, this is the core we are going to talk about, right? And this is really nice because we are going to talk about these modules one by one. And what are these modules? Let's me just give an overview. what all these modules because these are like independent sections we are covering and they can independently be discussed okay but they will be part of a single playlist so if you are a, if you are already building the apis then this is the right right way of doing it express i won't be talking about how to build apis with express but let's build a simple api simple implementation using express by using all the different tools and technologies using best practices practices we will baseline one application similarly with the nest js and then we will introduce a 12 factor principles and build a core baseline template for building any kind of service then uh, we will talk about okay how we can uh, think about the coding practices and all then different architecture pattern to build a microservices like i i want to build a simple service as a microservice and deploy as a lambda I want to build a simple authentication service and build, deploy that as on a server EC2. I want to build a microservice microservices which is listening to the asynchronous events coming from Kafka, RabbitMQ, Redis, right? So microservices can be uh, exposing interface asynchronous interface using uh, REST, GraphQL, or gRPC, or asynchronous interface which is listening to these asynchronous events coming from these. Uh, uh messaging queues and then deployment part that should be easy because we know how to deploy lambda to the how to deploy a simple express app as a lambda or nest js app as a lambda and then containerization we will discuss docker compose for the local containerization and kubernetes that is totally new to us so that's pretty much uh, i'm going to talk about and it's going to be really fun doing all these things together with this i'm already covering nest js advance but that is primarily talking about nest js stuff okay let's see you in the next video guys